Hello, Carol. Hello, Sam. Hello. I feel like I should be waving out the window because I'm um, I'm just down in the office in Low Cleebarrow and you're just over a couple of hills, so I should wave That's to right. you. That's right, I'll wave to you, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you're Carl Greenland, you're based in Windermere, um, well, Bowness really, I suppose, technically, is it? Yeah, we're practically neighbours. <laughs> we are practically our neighbours. And when we come out of lockdown, let's be proper neighbours. Yes, uh, definitely. Definitely. Uh, have you lived in Windermere for, or in the area for long? Uh, 59 years. <laughs> Since before you were born then? Like, a decade <laughs> before you were born. <laughs> born, in Ken born in Kendall. And uh, never left the area. <laughs> I've lived all over and I've come back here, so you haven't missed anything, Carol. Stay stay put. It's, it is it's beautiful, beautiful yeah. isn't it? It is. And my family have lived here for over 100 years. Wow. Wow. Well, you obviously love it and, and don't go <laughs> anywhere else, and I would completely agree with you. Um, now, the, the reason I asked uh, Carol to share her tips and uh, her expertise with you today is because Carol runs a very specific business don't you you have a very specific service so just tell us about your business carol um the business is called wardrobe wake up and that does exactly that it's so refreshing and uplifting to have a really organized wardrobe that works for your lifestyle as it is now not as it was years ago but as it is now so um i'm professionally qualified i find it a very creative experience and clients will uh emerge with a beautifully curated wardrobe and feel so much better well it's a great tip for right now as well because you know a great subject for right now because you know we're all probably well i'm going to speak just for me actually you know i'm looking at the same old clothes i'm wearing the same kind of things um i may look smart on my top i very rarely look smart on my bottom at the moment um bottom like the news like the news like the <laughs> yeah i'm not going to stand up I am wearing my trainers, actually, I have to tell you that, because I walked to the office this morning. So, yeah, it's uh, you very often get people who are like, you know, look nice and smart on the top, maybe a jacket on, but then not like that underneath. Did you, did you watch Danny Thompson's the other day? I haven't. No, sorry. No. no. So he was trying to thank Joe Island for sending him some socks. And the only way he could show his socks off is if he didn't wear any pants with his shirt. As in <laughs> So he stood up and he was only wearing his shirt, his boxers and his socks. <laughs> that was such a shock. I hadn't expected it. Oh, no, it did make me laugh. So um no, I missed that then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very memorable anyway. Uh, I, so, I, I, I can style men as well, by the way. It's not just ladies. That's I'm very good to know. There are some men out there that need some style. Men, yeah, either for business or leisure or you know, so presentation. How, how did you get into this then? Um then Carol, how did you start being a wardrobe wake up service? Well, golly, I've always had a, an interest in transformation. Right from when I was little, I loved the uh, films like My Fair Lady and uh, um, what's the other one? Anyway, I can't remember, but you it's know, modern, transformation. Modern day like, version, isn't it? Yeah, um, and um, of course, uh, came up actually in Kendall 20 years ago it was and it wasn't run by the college but it was run by an independent trainer called Norma Balan who's a qualified image consultant so it was a, a standalone course run by a private trainer so I didn't buy into a franchise or anything like that um, I thought it was too expensive and I just wanted to do it my way so over the years with raising a family and um, supporting my husband with his art business and all the rest of it, it has just developed, it's had a, a metamorphosis recently into wardrobe wake up. And I think now's the really the it's a good it's a good time. There's a lot on television about decluttering and re re-loving clothes and um, making the most out of your clothes. So I think it's I've caught the zeitgeist now. It's a really good time for this. I think it's a brilliant time for this. I, I took um, a bit of a, I made a promise last year to not buy any new clothes other than underwear. Can I just say that? To yeah. only buy, um, what do you call pre-loved uh, yeah. clothes? Yeah. Predominantly off eBay, but um, but the, we've got a great shop in Windermere, haven't we? Yeah, Cinderella Me, where I work part-time, uh, normally. 
<laughs> when I'm not locked down at home. And there you can uh, uh, see beautiful, beautiful clothes and get free styling advice from me. Even better, even better. And I will, I will go in by appointment as well if it's, you know, when it when it suits you. So. Oh, that's really that's very handy. Yeah. As opposed, on me. There's a lot of ladies at a certain age, pointing to myself here, that you know have probably worn the same styles for a long time, and a time has moved on, as in trends and you know looks have moved on. But also, b I've moved on. Like you know, um, I hate to say it, but my body shape isn't what it was, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, even maybe 10 years yeah. ago. So it needs evolving advice, I presume, over time. Is that right? Yeah, it's good to have a review every now and again. And as we, we change, not our bodies change, but our skin changes as well. Mm. So the colours that suited you 10, 20 years ago might be a bit more difficult to wear now. Yeah, exactly. And I think that um, I think there's, there's so much conflicting information out there for, for people like me, I mean, not that I would pick up a ma uh, fashion magazine, but if I did, I wouldn't know what advice to trust. You know, it, it just looks like there's a mishmash of styles and uh, colors that are all, you know, acceptable. Whereas, you know, in, in the 80s, when I was in the height of my fashion buying, um, you know, everybody just kind of looked the same. You knew what to buy. You knew where to get it from. And you're a lot younger and it didn't really matter. And you'd go night out and just but I think as you get older I think you need to be a bit more considered and buy well buy fewer but better and so I suppose what you're saying then Carol is that your clothes make a statement about you you need to make sure it's in alignment with how you feel and how you want to be portrayed is, is that fair to say yeah I like the clothes tell a story to me they are what I love about them is their ability to communicate and express and that's mm -hmm. so much about you giving yeah. the right information and, and uh, spending a bit of time a bit of consideration and uh, you'll feel better about yourself so so you often get a compliment and i know because i've heard it that i never get which is carol you always look so stylish you always look like yeah a Sorry, I didn't hear that. You always look like it's effortless. It is effortless. It is. Once you know what you're doing, it, and I can show you how my wardrobe is organised, it is effortless. Once you know what you're doing. So these, this shirt has a little pattern on it of shoes, whether you can see that. Yeah. But the, the, ear, the earrings are black and red to go with the, the shirt. And they also, importantly, not only are they the right colour, they're the right shape. So I'm very angular. I'm very angular. My face is angular. My features are angular. My body's angular. So I only wear angular shapes. So that's why these earrings work. If I had a, a circle of orange there, it, it just wouldn't work. That is so, I would never have known that. Never have known that. And I am the opposite of angular. What's that? Wishy. Let's move on. <laughs> Have a curvy face and curvy features. Um, yeah, I'm just all big circles, really, everywhere. Um, yeah. So why is now the right time, now we're under lockdown, to look at our wardrobes? Well, it's spring, everybody. It's just the most wonderful time to detox everything. And we have a lot more time on our hands, don't we? Now we've cleaned out all our kitchen cupboards and our desks and what have you. Why not start on your wardrobe? And it, it really will, I think, lift your spirits. Fantastic. So we've got time. It's the right time of year. And it's maybe yeah. the right time for us. So it's about new starts, isn't it? Well, spring is like that. It, it couldn't be a better time in a way, really. Spring is about cl cleansing this, this particular situation we're in. I see it as a great point of cleansing. Look at things that aren't working for you as well as things that are. Um, and it's a good time to just have a good clear out mentally, emotionally, physically, and your wardrobe. <laughs> so it's kind of like, a, it's it's a, an analogy, isn't it, for how you're feeling about yourself. If you open your wardrobe and, you know, everything falls out or it's unironed or it's, you know, it's sort of stuff you would never wear, that's not going to be good for your, for your mental health, is it? Well, if you open your wardrobe and it's all there organised beautifully, it gives you a lift every morning. The one tip that I give everybody, which I think is 
my one super duper tip is uh, uh, get your outfit ready the night before for the morning. Then you don't have that that decision to make because you've got mm -hmm. so much to do in the morning. You've got your breakfast and your kids and you've got to get it. Normally we have to get out the door. These days we don't. But, you know, <laughs> if you're prepared with your outfit, your coat, your shoes, your bag and all your papers ready, uh, it takes away all that hassle in the morning. Mm, completely agree. It's something I do actually a lot. So let's go into our five tips that you very kindly offered to share, Carol. You're welcome. So um, number one is prepare. And um, as any artist will tell you, it's you have to prepare your canvas. And that means take everything out of your wardrobe and put it on the bed or wherever is um, suitable. And then you have to clean it. Um, get your vacuum cleaner with the nozzle on or um, oh, one of these little nozzles. Yeah. And while it's all empty, give your, give your wardrobe a really good vacuuming out, get rid of all those that dust and stuff that's accumulated. Um, Carol, I have to admit to you that I don't think I've ever, ever <laughs> hoovered my wardrobe. It wouldn't have ever <laughs> even occurred to me to do it. So that but is wouldn't it, on my list. <laughs> But wouldn't it be refreshing to have it all clean? And what? then you, um, we've got a, a moth problem, or to prevent moths, take a cloth and put on either, um, I've got seawood or... Um, or lavender and take a cloth and just go over the wardrobe with cedarwood or lavender um, to, to try to prevent moths. And I've had a few um, moths um, in my wardrobe and I'll just give a mention here to Karen Bentley Brown who has a um, mending uh, service. I think it's the first Tuesday of every month in Castle Street and she's brilliant oh. and there's all sorts of people there mending all sorts of wonderful clocks and as well as clothes and what have you it's brilliant so clean your prepare your canvas first okay do you want step two I'm, 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 I'm reeling from step one I've got to be honest I didn't <laughs> that even a step. that's like a pre-step uh, and now I feel I need to reset my head on it. Um, I love the idea of taking everything out in your wardrobe. That's very kind of Marie Kondo, isn't it? Where you take everything out and then decide what to put back. But I hadn't actually thought about cleaning your palette while you're doing it. Yeah. So that's a great tip. Thank you. Um, then once you've got everything out, look at everything. A few questions to ask. And um, does, it, does it fit me? <laughs> it's a big one. <laughs> yeah not not six months ago or in six months time you know does it fit me now um i can tell you a story about that if we've got time, we've got yeah, time. Okay. so i bought these beautiful silver silver trousers from bowden uh quite a while ago now and i kept them for best uh, <laughs> as time went on by some you know miracle of nature they shrunk well in the wardrobe <laughs> <laughs> and when I got them out, I couldn't fit them. So they're completely unworn. They're in Cinderella me. Um, so another tip is wear your best things more often. Um, so uh, ask yourself, and does it fit your lifestyle? So when I talk to clients, we be, before I even go to a client, we do a whole um, uh, preamble on their lifestyle. Where do they spend their time? So Because you should spend your money on clothes where you spend your time. Does it reflect your personality as it is as it is now? Just go through these fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. um, a good thing to ask is if you saw this item now, would you buy it? Yeah, that's a really good question, actually. And what what would you say to somebody who is undecided? If you if you can't quite decide, and the the weight thing is a really good one, actually, because you might think well it's just been Christmas or it's just been locked down you know yeah. I've been bound to lose the weight in the next few weeks uh, or you're looking at it and you're not quite sure if it suits you yeah. what, what advice have you got for those people we put it in the maybe pile <laughs> simple um and ask yourself does it yeah does it make me feel good and does it have three friends so we talk, I talk about clothes having friends in the wardrobe so ideally when you buy a separate, 
It should go with three other things in already in your wardrobe, be for three seasons, depending on how you layer it up, and be for three reasons, depending on how you accessorize it. Great idea. Yeah. I love the idea of close own friends. But then yeah. I don't want to separate them from their friends, though. <laughs> yeah, well, that's where the creativity comes in, I think, because you can, I can probably, I, don't, I think this has happened with every client, has said, said, Carol, I would never have thought of putting that with that. It, it, it's where I like to be creative with it. So they've probably got more, fewer clothes, but more outfits. Yeah? Fewer clothes, more outfits. That's a really good way of looking at it. There was a lady yeah. in America, wasn't she, that had this idea of, is it called 30 for 30 or something? Did you ever come across that? Where she had, I think she had, she had a very extensive wardrobe. I think she was a fashion, you know, editor or something. And she decided that she was going to declutter a wardrobe and just get 30 things, including shoes, which would be one thing, but also, you know, um, jewellery. And she had 30 oh. things and she only wore those for 30 days. I think it was right. Oh. 30 for 100 days, I think it was. And she set us everybody the same challenge. And it's just how many outfits you can make from how few things. And that was a real yeah. eye opener yeah. for me. And I'm sure that that's what yeah. you help people do, isn't it? Well, we one of our, um, when I was training, one of our exercises was to take uh, 12 items and see how many different outfit combinations um, you could make from just 12 items. I got about 115, I think. Wow. But you can get, I've got a book, um, I might put it on somewhere, um, about Oh, it's thousands of outfits this girl's made out of about 30 items. It's amazing. Wow. But I got, I got about 115 out of 12 items. That's incredible. <laughs> I've got um, 12 out of 12, probably. That'd be my lot. That'd be it. <laughs> no, it depends on how... They, if they are working together with the right colour and combinations and, and styling and layering and so on, it's an interesting exercise to do. I can imagine. <laughs> I might be doing that in um, when I have a wardrobe day at the Create Escape in September. That's been rescheduled to 11th of September at the Create Escape. Brilliant. So what are you doing on that day, so people know? Um, it's a wardrobe wake-up day at the Create Escape on the 11th of September. Go on to the Create Escape and the details are there. Brilliant. And so, so you're going to be doing a workshop. Is that is that what it is? I will do a workshop for a number of people. Yeah, yeah. Great. And How exciting. One of the exercises will be to imagine twelve items and see how many outfits you can come up with it. Fantastic. What a great idea. So um, there's a few reasons why people hang on to items, and one of them is sentiment, which is understandable. Um, but that bridesmaid's dress that you wore for your auntie's wedding in 1974 isn't, isn't going to cut it now. Oh, Carol, <laughs> you've seen my wardrobe. What am I going to do? <laughs> but, um, uh, what you can do with sentimental items is make them into, well, of course, we've got loads of time now, is make them into a quilt <laughs> with your baby clothes that you, um, you know, you're keeping and your little ones and your... <laughs> Oh my goodness, give me a headache just thinking about it. Make your clothes into a quilt. Where would you even start? You need to do a workshop on that one, Carol. Well, that's another one for the Create Escape, isn't it? Perhaps, yeah, it um... definitely is. That's a great idea because actually when they are sentimental, I mean, I've got a little dress that Molly wore when she was a baby and I, yeah. I can't part with it. I just can't. But Absolutely. making it sounds like a nice idea. Yeah, so yeah, you could make them into um, your sentimental things into a, a quilt. <laughs> Um, another reason for holding on to things is they cost a lot of money, mm. which is understandable. But if if they don't if they don't fit you or they don't suit your lifestyle right now, you may as well sell them at Cinderella Me, for instance, or online or somewhere, and get some money back and give someone else some some pleasure. That's a great idea. By the way, how um, does Cinderella Me work? Do they sell on commission? Uh, yeah, you get forty percent of the price. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Um, and she's just up in Windermere, and uh, and uh, she's Helen's just absolutely lovely. Of course, she's closed now, but um, uh, I think she's got some online presence. So she could actually be very busy once she gets reopened with everybody who's oh, just. Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah, 
Um, so the third um, reason why people hold on to things is it's been it's a gift, and um, it may be a gift that you think, oh, I really I really like it, but I don't know whether. For instance, scarves scarves are great gifts, but they may not actually suit your colouring sort of up to your face. So what you can do with a scarf that doesn't suit you up here is you can make it into a belt, put it around your jeans, and have it dangling down, or you can tie it onto a handbag. Ah, I've never done that with a scarf, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Just gives it a little bit of a flair and personality. Yeah, and you I can like still that. wear your friend's gift, just not perhaps up to your face. Just an it idea. Looks, it looks very European when you do that. It looks very European. It looks like you should be in the pages of Vogue standing in front of the Eiffel Tower. Well, I bought this bag in Venice. <laughs> <laughs> as you do of course <laughs> yeah it's it's well you know it's lovely and it's lovely i love it um it is lovely. but anyway just an idea to put a scarf around a handbag great idea um and then next i um step three yeah is, is divide it into separate piles so we've got to keep as it is keep that needs altering mending or cleaning sell at cinderella me give a give away to a friend give because you know your friend might say uh oh I, I i really like that and you say oh it doesn't suit me so actually so this has happened to me um sometimes you're shopping with a friend and you're so close to them you you actually shopping for each other and this happened to me and a friend in america we both we both bought these items and because it looked good, it looked so good on her, but she said, oh, it looks so good on you. But it didn't. And it's kind of a reflection of your your friendship in a way. We ended up just swapping a while later. <laughs> How funny. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and then there's a gift to charity pile. And as we said before, a maybe pile. And then... Um, and by the way, we're going to put all these tips in the post yeah. so everyone can read them. And also, yeah. um, and also, Carol's got a, a more extensive one that she can send out to anybody, isn't that right, Carol? That if you've got, um, if you want to have a look at the full, the full list, then absolutely, yeah. you can ask her. Yeah, perfect. Um, now then, the next step is to put everything back in the wardrobe. Uh, are we, have we got enough time, Sam? Yeah, we have. Yeah. Uh, okay. Joanna Ireland's just phoning me, so she obviously isn't watching this. Joanna, where are you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and you can put these back in the wardrobe in many different ways and or combinations of ways. So by season, so you put all your autumn and winter things together and all your spring and summer things together. By reason, so all your work clothes together, all your ledger clothes together, all your best clothes together. So you could then subdivide that so you could have spring and then you could have all your work clothes together for spring, all your leisure clothes together for spring. All your... And you could do it by outfit. So you could put all your out specific outfits together. So say you have a, a really a work, um, heavy work week. You could put all your outfits together at the beginning of the week. That's a great idea. So you could have like five outfits all actually yeah. in advance. What a fantastic yeah, that's, idea. That's what I did on my Facebook thing. I put together five outfits for working at home. Uh, which don't involve pajamas or um, or track pants. Oh, that's why I didn't watch it. <laughs> um, by colour, so you could put all your red things together, for instance, and all your blue things together, and all your white things together. Or by item, so you put all your tops together and all your woolens together, and so on. And as I say, or combinations of each, and I do that quite a lot um, when I see a client. So one of my ladies had, um, she was widowed actually. And she loved um, to go on cruises, but she lived in a three bed bungalow. So I said, why don't we just use all these rooms? So she had one cupboard, which was all her cruise wear. And, and then in that, I think in that room, one bedroom, she had all her spring summer wardrobe. And then uh, she had another room that she just slept in. And then in the other room, she had an autumn winter wardrobe. So she, although she lived on her own in a three bed house, she was using more of the house. So it was, it felt good for her. Hmm, I can see that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, can I come on to a few storage tips 
Absolutely, yeah. please do. So number five is, is storage, but how to store your clothes. There's a few things that I do um, that make good, in my opinion, good storage sense. So when you store your, your shoes, now I store mine in boxes, but some people store them, um, and I have my boxes all labelled <laughs> with what they are, so... <laughs> This is why anybody's watching. This is why Carol always looks so stylish because she does this kind of thing. Whereas the rest of us just chuck our shoes in the bottom of our wardrobe, which hasn't been hoovered out. This is why. <laughs> this is why I'm looking like I do. So yeah, so I have you know blue flats, red wedges, brown boots. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but if you store your if you store your shoes on a shelf, I'll show you. Um, how about these? Uh, wow. Like that. They take up more, take up a bit of room. So what you do is you turn one round. So your heel and your toe are together at the front, and your heel and your toe are together at the back. What a simple tip! Why does nobody do that? Ooh, they haven't met me, obviously. That is a great tip. So that takes up a lot less room on your shelf. Okay, that's number one. Um, second tip is oh yeah, um. Uh, tights. I store mine in um, sealed, sealed plastic bags. This one has black tights written on it. So I've got one for black tights, one for navy tights, one for neutral tights, and oh one my for, and one for um, uh, coloured and patterned tights. And these are from Lakeland. So you've always got clean tights that haven't got any snags or holes in. Great idea, that one. Great idea. I love that. <laughs> What, um, oh yes, hangers. Uh, so jackets and heavy things go on wooden hangers um, because they're just um, stronger. And my sort of lighter um, shirts and blouses, they go on these like velvet, Velvet hangers, I've got those, Carol. They're absolutely brilliant, and and yeah. I I love them. They don't misshape your clothes, and your clothes oh. cling to them better. They stay on. They keep them good. And I got um, they're they're really cheap from TK Maxx. They're I got my Brandon. I got mine. I think I got fifty for about yeah a quid or something. They were not expensive yeah. at all. Yeah, and so wood for your coats and jackets, and the and they take up a lot less room. Yeah, they're really narrow, aren't they? They're good. Bro. They take up less room. Mm. So that's that. Um, and, oops. Uh, oh, yes. Now then, my jeans, my jeans and leggings, I don't hang. I store them rolled up like that. So you can get a pair of jeans out, but it doesn't have that, that hanger mark on or a pair of leggings. So you just take your jeans out all rolled up. And they, they keep Chris free. Uh, no hanger marks, so roll your jeans on your leggings. Great idea. Okay. And, um, oh, yeah, underwear. Um, this is my, these are my, my socks I keep in a, in, <laughs> in a drawer with, um, these are all my socks um, all rolled up in a basket. I think these are available from, from Lakeland, as are the plastic bags, I think, as well. You put the basket in the drawer. Put, yeah. And why why was put it in a drawer? Is the drawer not because it because they all get mixed up? Is that the problem? Yeah. So I have a basket for socks, and I have a basket for bras and baskets for knickers, which I'm not going to show you. <laughs> not on this video, anyway. Not on this video, that's a different. That's a different channel. Exactly. So I understand. Yes, <laughs> that's a whole new way of working from home. <laughs> I love the idea of the baskets, and I would never have thought about putting a basket inside a drawer. That's incredible. Yeah, that's so, so easy. Yeah, so you've got your socks, and all your tights are in plastic bags all the way up. Your socks, your bras, your knicks, and everything. It also means you can take it out and sort it a lot easier, or look for an odd one or whatever, because it's not all yeah. mixed up. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, and finally, um, I store my uh, my woolens for the winter because all the woolen things are going into storage now for winter. In again, these moth-proof bags. Um, so that, after that, Carol, where do you put yours once they're in a, ba a bag? Sorry, say that again. I'd put them once they're in a bag. What, what, what would you do with them 
Until my, woolens, my woolens, they're in store. My woolen dresses and uh, heavy jumpers and um, big coats and winter stuff are in storage now. And when you're in storage, are they in a different part of your wardrobe, a different room, in the attic? What do you do with them? Yeah, in a different part of the house, yeah. Under the bed. Under, <laughs> under the bed? bed in the, under the bed storage things, you know. Um, and we've got oh. a bit of an attic as well. Well, they're good, the under the bed storage ones. I'd be worried that I wouldn't be able to find it all the next year or I wouldn't know what my what day the season starts again. And, you know, I'd probably have to put it in my, in my calendar to tell me where to find all the things I've stored from the previous season. You could write a little list of them as you're doing it, you see. You are so organised. Stick it on the outside. <laughs> My goodness. Okay. The more, the more I'm listening to this, the less organised I feel at the moment. Uh, so thank you for these. These are really, really useful tips. Uh, it's made um, life um, so much, so much easier. You know, like people say to me, you always look put together, but it's because I'm... Um, I know which styles and colours suit me and I've just got everything organised and it saves huge amounts of time and stress. I also think you prioritise um, the way that you look more than some of us do. Um, and But it shows every time I see you, even if you just walk in the dog, you always look, and I know everybody says this to you, but you always look so stylish. And so you're putting it down to organisation. I was going to put it down to talent you know, and skill. But I suppose what you're saying is that you can help other people who don't have the skill and talent to put things together that you do, but you can help them with the organisation so that they know what to wear and when to wear it and how to store. Yeah, yeah I do. I mean, I, 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 I'm I properly qualified image consultant, so I know about colour and style. And you've also got to take into account um, shape, and texture, fabric, proportions, materials, all sorts of things. And once you know you know what you're doing and put it all in the what clients will find is that they see a pattern emerging as I do it go oh oh and I'm away with the banners and what have you and they say oh there's a pattern oh yes and and then they'll say oh Carol I, I could put that with that couldn't I and I go yes now now you're learning for yourself how to do it that's brilliant and you know you remind me a little bit of Lucy Nicholson from Lucy's on a plate who I think is watching because she can look in a fridge that to me looks bare and somehow make a meal and you yeah. can look in a wardrobe that's all mixed up and somehow create a beautiful outfit from it so I think what you do is is a real skill thank you so what tell us what you do what is your service for clients obviously once we've come out of lockdown what is it that you actually offer to people so initially well we'll have a 20 minute conversation and I send them um, an email uh, to invite them to look at their lifestyle so uh, how much time do they spend working uh, at the ho at the house, out with the dog, at the gym, socialising, going on holidays, sleeping, what have you? Because, as I said before, you should um, spend your money where you spend your time. And then I, I go to their house and um, we do. Uh, <laughs> I might not get the hoover out at the house, but... <laughs> But, um, you know, we go through all the clothes in, in, a, in a very similar way. But as I said, when I'm actually with someone, I will know their, their palette and I'll know their lifestyle and their palette and their shape and their face shape as well. Because necklines are really important. So if you've got an angular shaped face like mine, uh, angular shaped um, necklines suit you better and angular jewellery and, and glasses and everything it all coordinates oh, I didn't realize that that's amazing yeah, yeah you are so really good at this stuff I'm, I don't mean to state the obvious but it, you know when you say it, it makes it sound obvious but to most people like me it, it really isn't now um yeah. you normally have this service what what do you normally I've put you on the spot here sorry um, I should have asked you this in advance but uh, do you want to talk about what you normally charge or the sort of price range people would normally spend with you um, there's a price range on, there's a lot more detail and testimonials on my website, wardrobewakeup.co.uk. It's uh, 195 for half a day and 395 for a full day. But you, you're saving so much money for people who yeah. were about to either put something out the wardrobe or they've never worn something that's got the tags on. You know, I'm guilty of that. So actually £195 <laughs> for half a day, you, you've got, you end up with a whole wardrobe of clothes that you didn't have before. Yeah, and you also save money on mis big mistakes in the future. So that when you go shopping, I don't know if you've noticed, but um, 
clothes are quite often hung in um, colour families on yeah. rails. And once you know your colour family or your colour palette, you can see, like I could see a whole load of uh, beautiful burnt oranges and warm greens and and um, yellows and know that nothing will suit me. So I just I can just walk past for me. So it's so liberate it's it's so liberating to have a well curated wardrobe. It really is. It saves you time. It saves you money, and you will be look effortlessly groomed and good and feel good about yourself. Well, you, you've sold it to me. I think the idea of having a well curated wardrobe is something I've never heard before, but now I want it. I Thank feel you. like I need it, and I think everybody watching this will also feel the same. Uh, we've got some good friends on here. So, um, hi, Joe Evans, uh, Mary Rose, Victoria, hi. Lucy, Anne, hi. Andrea. Everybody's on here, all giving you um, some big thumbs up, some thanks for what you shared oh. today. It's a really useful session. So, thank you. Thank um, you. You've also said to me very kindly that you've offered during this period of lockdown uh, to give anybody who they, they feel need it. Um, needs it a 20 minute consultation with you is that all right on the phone or by facetime or whatever yeah perfect yeah so obviously you can't go through the whole wardrobe but you can give them some pointers um yeah, absolutely i'd love to yeah i'd love to thank you thanks that for the opportunity no no well thank you and um if you go over to just to say thank you please to carol go over to uh, wardrobe wake up carol i think is that right i forgot what it was called now the well, um, we've packed the page i think Facebook page is wardrobe wake up. Yeah, wardrobe wake up. Okay. Um, so we'll find that we'll make sure we've tagged it. And then if people go over and give you a like, and then they can message you. you through the page. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. You've shared some amazing tips with us today, Carol. I really appreciate your time. I've learned absolutely loads. I feel like I've got a whole task ahead of me. Um, and I can't wait for us to get our lockdown so you can come and help me with it. Uh, Jerry Mahoney is also on. She's saying thank you as well. It was a great session. So I knew it was going to be a popular one. Didn't realize quite how popular, but it's I'm really. Amazed. Thank you so much. Oh, by the way, if you look on Carol's Facebook page, she's also started doing some videos. So go and see what she's doing. Give her a little bit of support and start yeah. sharing this stuff. It's what to wear in lockdown. Five outfits uh, to wear in lockdown. Don't involve pajamas or tracky bottoms. <laughs> I feel like you've written that for me. So thank you. All right, Carol. Thank you very Pleasure. much. Uh, thank you, Alice. Who's behind the camera. Uh, Alice is on yeah. tech duty today, so thank you. And, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Carol. Bye for now. Pleasure. Pleasure. Bye.